good day. Today we're going to be focusing on Fusion 360 and this Puzzle Cube project uh, that we did at Inventor, but now we're piloting it for the Fusion 360 software. And so Fusion 360 works a little bit differently than the Inventor tools, especially when we get to constraints and uh, the aspect of connecting parts and assemblies together. So Fusion uses a tool called Joints, and that joint can be a multitude of different flexible style of joints, or in one case, a rigid joint. But before we actually do that, we need to create a couple of more pieces uh, to make an assembly, and then we'll talk about uh, creating uh, the joints to assemble those pieces to our uh, design. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create, under the file pull down, we're going to go ahead and create a new design. Uh, and what this will allow us to do is create a new object, and we're going to go ahead and sketch. And we'll pick the plane that we want to sketch on. And in this case, I'm going to sketch on uh, the base plane. And that base plane, we're going to create a shape and again, this is a, one of the basic shapes that, that we typically create, as, or a lot of students create in a puzzle cube uh, project. And so this particular part has been created, and then we need to add the dimensions. So the process-wise is no different than what we've done in the past, and we can use constraints such as equal to pick the top line and the other top line. There's the option of collinear to make sure that both of these are on the same plane. The height we need to dimension. And the thickness here we're going to need to dimension, and the overall length we're going to need to dimension. And there's our block. We're going to finish the sketch, and we'll extrude it, and we can push pull it, and we can type in our distance in the dialog box of 0.75. So we can create the blocks pretty readily. Uh, as we design our components. All right, if we window around the component and right mouse click, we should be able to change the appearance pretty easily. And we can choose different materials or paint colors. And we're going to do a glossy, uh, we'll do a glossy yellow. And so you can just drag and drop the paint color. If you want it in your current design, you can pull it up, drop it in the current design area, or you can just drag and drop it directly on the part. So it's going to be a glossy yellow appearance. And you can either minimize this, or you can close that particular dialog when you're finished. All right, so now we've got our second part. We're going to go ahead and save this. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. And we'll call this, it's going to be under our class instruction area. So again, set up multiple folders uh, when you're doing this to keep your project separated. And we'll call this PZZL2. And we'll hit save. All right, now previously I had PZZL1, which was over here. So I've got two parts now in my Fusion environment. And so now that I've got two parts, I can work on creating a concept assembly. Maybe. So in essence, we'll start with PZZL1. So in PZZL1, I can now do assembly. And when I do assembly, I can do a new component associated with the, the assembly. And I, part of the idea is that I can uh, create a new component inside an existing component to develop the assembly. So as you can see, we've got two objects now. We've got a PZZL1 object and a PZZL2 object. 
Now what's interesting about these is that these are considered bodies. And so bodies are a shape, but for us to actually combine them into an assembly, bodies don't work. So we have to convert the body to a component. Once they're a component, we can then bring the components together into one assembly. So PZL, PZZL2, we're going to show you how to convert this to a component. The fastest way is to right mouse click under bodies and then choose create components from bodies. Now you've got component one here, so I'd like to do a slow double click. And then I'll call this PZZL2 yellow. So that way I know exactly what that component is. Now what's neat about this is that we can take this and just copy and paste it as a component in another fusion drawing. So if we right mouse click and choose the copy command, so we're copying that component, we're going to click over into PZZL1, we'll right mouse click, and we'll choose a paste new. And when it comes in, it'll bring all the component information and say, well, where do you want to place it and so forth. And right now we'll just leave it at the zero zero spot. And we'll work with it here in just a few minutes to adjust it and position it. Uh-oh. But PZZL1 was created and it's still a body. So we need to right mouse click on PZZL1 and create that as a component. And again, slow click, rename it. I can't emphasize enough about the renaming process inside Fusion to keep things straight. But notice that when it changed from a body to a component, the icon also changed, which made this now a usable assembly. And components can be moved. Now we can also create a new component by using the Assemble button. So I can choose Assemble, and we're going to create an empty component, and it's going to be called PZZL3, and we're going to color this one blue. And we'll choose OK. So PZZL1 and 2 now have grayed out. I now need to create a sketch. And again, the sketch can be created in any environment. So we're going to go ahead and create it. Uh, some components have been moved. Continue. And I'm going to go ahead and create my shape, which is going to be basically a rectangle. And we'll dimension the rectangle. Again, no different than what we've done before. So this is going to be 1.50, 1.50, and we'll finish this sketch and extrude it. Point 0.75. But now I'm going to put a new sketch surface on top of it and create a new rectangle from the corner and let's see here is that the right way I want to do this nope I actually want to create the rectangle from this opposite corner here let's see here no nope, I can do that sorry it was my I messed up there. We can create it from that side. That's fine. Um, that's going to be a 0.75 by 0.75. And finish this sketch and we'll extrude this by 0.75. Just that little square. All right, now that we're done with our component, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. 
so we're able to um, save our particular objects. To color the object blue, we'll window around the object. Uh-oh, don't want to select all three. We actually just want to select this object, and we probably want to select the top part also. So again, notice the difference. The dashed box will select everything. Everything must be inside the orange colored box, and if it is not, it will not select it. Okay, and we want to change the appearance. Oop, don't want to select that box. So let's do this. Let's move this out of the way first. Just grab and move it. Now let's go ahead and window around it. Right mouse click appearance. Remember we had the appearance window here. And we want to find blue. We'll drop blue. We'll drop blue on our part. And that now becomes part of our design. So as you can see, we have our objects, and each one of those we can activate or deactivate independently of each other. So we're doing the three components on the bottom here. The activation button is out on the end, and I can activate any one of the three objects. I'm going to go ahead and activate the red number one object. The easiest way to ground it is by right mouse clicking on the list of the component and choosing ground. Now it says that I've moved around some of the components. I want to capture their position so that way they're in a new location. So now this part is grounded. That one cannot move. The other components are still movable. And that's what we're shooting for. All right. So our next thing is that I need to activate all the components so we can see them and make them visible. So I go all the way to the top of the list, which is the very beginning activation and that's like the assembly level and now I've basically created um, or turned on all the objects so these particular objects are now going to need to be assembled and we do the assembly process through the joint so the joint command has us capture the current position now this allows us to select an object that is movable and so what I need to do, and when I put it on a surface, you can see all the data points I can connect to. And then I'm going to be able to put it onto the grounded object and connect to a similar data point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to connect this data point right here to this data point right here, which is that corner. Oh man, but it connected the correct point, but I might need to rotate the object. And so it allows me now to take this particular object and reposition it. And I can do that. In this case, I'm going to do a negative 90 degree rotation. So that way the block rotates in the appropriate position. And that's one of the really neat things about Fusion is that this is a rigid joint, so it's fixed. It's not going to move. But even within that one rigid joint, instead of setting an offset distance, ABC, I can also then do the rotate. So I'm able to control exactly with one specific joint. So it's not a constraint where we had to create three separate constraints. We create one joint, adjust it as we need it, and it's finished. We're going to choose OK. Same thing here. We're going to have to figure out how this object is going to connect here on the end of this block. So the easiest way to do that would be to set the block and use the top of this block and the inside of the other block as the connecting components. So we'll then choose the joint option. You can also type the letter J. And yes, we can, we'll choose the captured position. So this is our movable object. So we have to go over to the movable object. 
And one of the interesting things is, is that if I can't get to a surface or there's a hole and I want to select the middle of the hole, I can hold the control key uh, inside Windows or I can hold the control key on the uh, Apple and it'll allow me to cycle through the different connection points. So I'm going to pick, uh, let's see here, I am going to pick the outer edge connection point here. And so now I'm going to pan this back over and realistically I want to pick this outer edge connection point for that to connect to. All right, so again, close, but it needs to be rotated into the appropriate position. So again, we want to rotate it either 90 or 180, depending upon the direction that it happens to be. And again, I can type that value in inside the joint window. I can also use the flip button, or I can flip it upside down, depending upon the connection. Now there's other connections that can be made here. So the revolution allows you to spin on that connection point. A slider, very nice, slides up and down, and you can control the axis of sliding. Cylindrical does both rotation and sliding at the same time. A pin slot is like if you've got a pin that slides along a slot for a mechanism. Planar means it moves along on that surface. And then lastly a ball is like a ball joint where you've got a, a uh, outer covering and a ball inside or a ball and socket kind of scenario and it kind of rotates inside that component so this is going to be a rigid fixed position because none of these components are movable and we choose OK so as you can see the joint command is one that's extremely powerful significantly more powerful than constraints within Inventor because it only requires a single joint to place a component. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.